Okay. So, Mr. Ben. <laughs> yes. What are we doing? We have a long day ahead of us. It's like 1 o'clock. Yeah. This Sunday, there is a race out at Harris Hill Raceway that I make. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we make it to. Like, Blip Speed has to be there. Has Blip Speed be. has to represent. <laughs> this isn't just a normal car race. I'm going to have to tell you, tell you that right now. Okay. No. What is it? it is a, what are we racing? It is, I guess you would call a soapbox derby um, car race setup. Yeah. Okay. Something. Basically, the only rule is you're not allowed to have a motor. Okay. Uh, and it could just be whatever you imagine. It just needs to be the fastest one down the hill. I brought you over here to my desk in the yeah. in the shorter chair. Thank you for that. Just to explain the story real quick, give the audience something to to understand what is actually happening in this video. Yeah. What is happening in this video? I have no. Idea. <laughs> In this build, I'm only going to build with things that are available inside this shop right now. Yeah. And so I repurposed Hank's old stroller from when he was a baby. Yeah. We're going to use these wheels. They look pretty skookum. They're pretty skookum. Uh, I'm a little worried about them. <laughs> Basically, this video is not very complex. We're just going to no. shoot a montage of this build real quick. Yeah. Go out to Harris Hill Raceway, enter into this race, and beat all the kids. Beat kids. We keep trying this beat kids thing, and it's just, it's not rolling uh, over, is it? No. Not... Come on. You gotta talk this up a little bit. <laughs> like, it's not gonna an be... An advanced race shop. <laughs> it's not gonna be the most impressive thing ever. I'm literally gonna bum rush this thing together in like three yeah. hours. Whatever. I say <laughs> we start the montage. I think that's not in the spirit, yeah. Let's build a cart. Let's go. I learned something about myself during this build. Basically, I'm a heartless jerk. Here I am, filming myself, building a really cool toy that only adults are allowed to play with. You don't know it yet because I just started the build in this video, but I clearly knew there would be some kids at this downhill derby, and I showed up to this thing in an absolute death machine. My design puts you riding on your tummy, face forward, and you know, you steer with your arms, and like a crotch rocket, you just hope you don't find a wall somewhere. Just imagine what a head-on collision with a tree, what would that do to a five-year-old? No way in hell anyone under 18 gets to ride this. And that makes me feel truly awful. So next year I'll be developing something more for the kids. I need to get this bad taste out of my mouth. I have a three-year-old and I can't even give him a ride on this thing. That makes me feel bad. I've already decided I'll hide it in the attic for him to discover one day, you know, when he's big enough to fish it back down, he can play with it. In the meantime, I'm sorry, Hank. Daddy's a jerk. Anyways, working with this aluminum kind of reminded me of a tip I wanna share with you real quick. The aluminum I used in this build, I've had forever. I have no actual memory whatsoever where it came from. I used some of it on the tire shaver project, but every time I try to weld it, I don't get the best results. No amount of cleaning, brushing, or wiping with acetone makes a difference. My welds look dirty every time I weld it. <laughs> Who knows what these sticks have been through before they were in my possession. For all I know, they could have been used on an oil rig or you know, something like that. I say this because when you're first starting out welding, especially TIG, you run into these materials and no matter what you do, they will not weld or look unprofessional at best. After you've replaced your torch, swapped out different cup sizes, tried all the different types of tungsten, you know, after you get a new tank of gas, more cleaning and scrubbing, possibly even buying another welder, do you realize, hey, maybe it's not what you're welding with, but what you are welding. All right. At the hobby level, you will often see random chunks of metal and just grab it and toss it in your ever growing stash of metal you wanna weld someday. But more than ever, as we import more and more Chinese goods, you will find a piece of Chineseium, as Ave likes to call it. And who knows what alloys were used to create that random bed frame bracket you know you want to weld to a flower stand 
you know, overseas, they just grab whatever recycled scrap is laying around and toss it into the smelter and just create these weird amalgams of, I don't know what you call it. It's not exactly metal. But the point is, a new welder will try to weld this stuff and just not understand why it won't weld. It's magnetic, it grinds like metal, it looks and feels like metal, but whatever they put in it makes it unweldable. So if you're new to welding, you can save yourself some troubleshooting by making sure you start with a good known material. And like magic, I'm done talking about stuff and the montage is over. Crazy how that happens. Everything rides on you right now. I can I can bring the trophy home. We need a trophy. I can bring the trophy home. We don't have a single blip speed trophy yet. Alright? Think about it. Think really hard. Alright. Think really flat. Really flat, exactly. Wherever you see two cones, you split them. That's gate one, two, three, four, five. As soon as you get through five, you have the choice of taking the runaway truck route in the grass to slow you down, okay. or coming carving back through pit lane, uh, from the paddock onto pit lane. Now, that wall is unprotected. These hay bales are here for you to hit, just in case you can't make the turn. Just a warning that you're maybe over speed. Yeah, so it's a, you know, you can bend up to slow down after going through that gate to make this run down onto pit lane. And then I think we're gonna flag the race as who coasts the farthest. So, yes, what you're gonna do is, um, I'll, I'll go down there with the checker flag. Do you understand where it goes? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's just do this. Hold on, let me, let's give me a chance to get more, more, more crashing. John didn't go through a single one. Uh, it looked good. It looked really no, good. No, it did not look good. It looked, oh, looked, 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 like, looked fun. Good job surviving. That's all I got for the Harris Hill Downhill Derby. To be completely honest, I was having such a blast, I did a terrible job of filming it all. I probably went down that hill at least 10 times with the kid, and I'm not gonna lie, 
I'm a little out of shape and that hill got pretty heavy, but make sure you check out Harris Hill Raceway if you're in the area. We have a beautiful track and amazing people who make events like this happen. I put a link to their website down in the description. I can't decide what picture I like best. John taking the runaway lane? Or Frank doing 360s? Or maybe just this kid's face? Oh, look at that. That's the face of a kid that is about to lose because we beat all the kids. Except for Hank. He always rode in John's cart and that thing is just unfair. All right, thanks everyone. Have a good one. What's your favorite? Okay. He's my favorite. That one's your favorite? Yeah. Where's Frank? Frank didn't hear that, right?